In many ways, the latter half of the 20th century was the age of the transistor. Uh, everything that we've seen today in computation, communication, sensor technology, all really came out of the development of the transistor and everything that flowed from that. I believe that the first half of the 21st century will in many ways be the age of biology, the age in which engineering comes into biology, medicine, healthcare, the environment. And I think that the Whiting School of Engineering and Johns Hopkins University are uniquely positioned to lead in this 21st century, given where technology is going. I think that the priorities for the campaign, rising to the challenge, the campaign for Johns Hopkins University, is to bring the resources that will allow us to provide to our faculty, our students, our staff, the physical space, the intellectual space, the tools that they need to have important impact and make advances in addressing the most important challenges that we face today. Within the context of education, we need to have the resources to offer scholarships, financial aid to a diverse set of students from across socioeconomic classes, from across ethnicities, uh, to all be able to attend Johns Hopkins University uh, because of their academic qualifications and not to be limited by their financial abilities. Certainly, one of the things that's important to us is endowed professorships. One might say that uh, talented, accomplished people are the true limited resource, and there's tremendous competition for that pool of talent. On the research front, we need to provide our faculty state-of-the-art facilities, laboratories, buildings, uh, equipment, uh, opportunities to uh, move in directions that may not be recognized yet by funding agencies as being important. And so we need to be at the forefront by having those resources at our disposal. And we have to create an ecosystem that allows our faculty to move the products of their scholarly research activity into forms that will have impact in people's lives and in society. An example of that is the development of a completely self-contained implantable artificial heart, a program that we've launched in partnership with our School of Medicine. And one of the areas of strength in the Whiting School of Engineering is our biomedical engineering department and program. It has been consistently ranked the number one program in the country uh, for years. And we also have been successful in establishing leadership in a number of areas, uh, in the way that we look at extreme materials through our Hopkins Extreme Materials Institute, in the way that we look at materials technology, civil infrastructure, mechanical systems, computational systems, robotics technologies. But all of these things require continued investment, they require continued attention, they require occasional risk-taking, and it is the resources that we will obtain through this campaign that will allow us to continue to make those investments in those areas. As engineers, we always seek to go beyond what we think is possible. That's true of our research, the way we educate students, it's what, how we demand uh, accomplishment from our faculty and our students, and in some sense it's also true of what we've taken on in this campaign. Our goal of $275 million uh, to, in the endowment is a stretch, but we believe that if we can achieve that goal, we will have the kinds of resources to take on the kinds of projects, the kinds of initiatives that will truly place the Whiting School at the forefront of technology in the 21st century. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you for your support in the future, and I want you to be assured that we will put your investment to great use and great effect.